everybody. It's Leslie Ray, and this is Leslie Ray's Crafty Gig. Um, I I remember I was actually supposed to be doing um, start of school stuff with you today, but um, I changed my mind. And let me tell you why I changed my mind. A friend of mine is a school teacher, and she wrote a blog post a couple of days ago, and she did like it, love it, or leave it of teacher gifts. And so I thought, oh, well, that's interesting, and I would read it. And so what I learned from this, I will share with you, because this is important, um, and this is why I changed what I was going to be doing. What she shared with me is that things teachers like, teachers like more supplies for their room, like staples, staplers, glue, pens, pencils, stuff like that. People also, or teachers also like, like small denomination gift cards. So like $5 to Starbucks or $5 to the teacher store or, you know, or if you can give more, give more, but small denomination gift cards. What they don't like is yet another Apple project or a project for, um, yes, money is always the right size, or another cutesy gifty thing, um, another plant, another teacup. Oh, good Lord, no more teacups. So, you've seen me do these. These are my favorite ways to give gift cards. These are toilet paper rolls. Uh, for those of you who are new, um, there are several opportunities to learn how to make these. So you can make these, make a pocket on it, like this has a little pocket right here, and a gift card would fit in that little pocket. So for instance, like here, let's pretend this is a gift card. You can stick it in here, okay? So there's tons and tons and tons of ways to do these, and I do these all the time. Um, I've got several videos on how to do these and tutorials. So I didn't want to bore you with this. Um, and I guess I could take you on a shopping spree with me to Staples, um, but then we would have a live stream and there would be issues with that. So, so instead of doing this, yes, save, I, I use TP rolls a lot, a lot, a lot, Liz, and these are so much fun to craft with, but that's what these are, are just TP rolls, again, with my bind it all, y'all know how I love my bind it all, and bound these two together and they're perfect. So gift cards, extra supplies. And um, one thing that I thought was interesting because the other thing that is easy for my family to make and a lot of people that I um, am friends with enjoy is, is baked goods. And she said, leave those because she said like in her situation, if she doesn't know you or your kitchen and you don't know her family and all the allergies that they have, then that's kind of presumptuous of us to make baked things because um, we don't know what their family is allergic to. So we need to not do that, right? So no more baked things unless I really know the teacher. I'm not giving any more baked things or stuff like that because, you know, they're going to say thank you, but... Um, they're not going to eat them. And so I would rather give my baked things to people I know who are going to eat them. So I think I'm going to give a questionnaire to my teachers the first day of school and say, if I make you fudge, will you eat it? Or if I bring you this, would you use it? Um, just so they know. Yeah. Peanut allergies. Well, where she's coming from is her kid is allergic to red and red food dye and all that stuff. Um, but there's also other allergies in the food, in the, in the family. And, you know, it's just not safe for her to take that chance. Yeah. No food. Not, or not, or no foof. Either, either one, no food or no foof. But, you know, it's just not safe for them to take that chance. And so I, I totally get what she's coming at. Right. So, so my favorite, my favorite gift, obviously, is um, I always, oh, I know, I love zucchini bread, too. But um, my favorite gift is always extra school supplies 
because I buy them when Staples and Walmart have like the, the one cent and the 10 cent sales and that kind of stuff. I always stock up. So I get extra school supplies. I'm going to put them in a basket. Um, probably go get some little gift cards to Staples or to Starbucks or something like that. Make some of these and stick in them. You've seen me do this. So let's move on to what we were going to do next time. Is that okay with everybody? I'm cool with that if you're cool with that. So that's our teacher gift. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> right? So what I... What I have been asked by several people, because I do have Pearl X, uh, Perfect Pearls, and the Terry Sprawl Mixers, I've been asked by several people to kind of um, explain more about Pearl X. There seems to be a big mystery about Pearl X. So, Pearl X is another kind of mica powder, very, very similar to Terry Sprawl Mixers, and as I've told people all along, um, you can use them almost the same way, everything you do. Um, for instance, here is a real lovely, lovely russet color. Whoops, here we go. Sorry. Here is a real lovely, lovely russet color. Um, it looks very familiar, if those of you who are familiar with Pearl X. I love these. Or this blue. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And it's a mica powder. It's very, very fine. It has no binding agent in it. Um, this product is from a company called Jacquard. And there is no binding agent in the product. What does that mean? What that means is that when I mix it with water and spray it on something, it's going to rub right back off. Okay? It has nothing in it to stick it to the paper, to adhere it to the paper. If you buy Pearl X watercolor um, rounds, it's like a palette with all the watercolors in it. Um, like Altered Pages sells them. Uh, there's lots of places that you can find them. But they, they are Pearl X watercolor tablets or palettes with... They have the gum arabic which is a binding agent already mixed into them so when you get them wet and you paint with them they're going to stick to the paper now you can make your own i'm sorry this is in a um a, a pimento jar um, but this is gum arabic and a little goes a very long way uh, the reason this is in a pimento jar is because i've had this gum arabic probably um, eight years and it has um, it had crystallized so hard on the cap which was a plastic cap the last time I used it my husband had to get pliers to open it and it broke the, the, the plastic cap and so because of that I said well let's just get a jar and so he put it in this for me but it's kind of a yellow color um, you can get some clearer it doesn't look yellow when you paint with it okay I know some people will use hairspray for a binding agent. Um, I do not recommend hairspray because that definitely will yellow over time. And over time, I mean pretty quickly. Hairspray has been known to, to do that very, very quickly. Um, I saw, and we may try this here in a minute, uh, using some um, a white glue like Mod Podge to mix with water, equal parts Mod Podge and water, and add the Pearl X to it and make a mist with that. Um, if I make a mist with Pearl X, I will add about three quarters of a spoon of the, um, of this stuff, gum Arabic, sorry, to um, about three teaspoons of water and then however much Pearl X I want in there for the sparkle and the color. And that works very well. Now, if you want to make your misters with Perfect Pearls, the Ranger product, Perfect Pearls, all you need is some water, the Perfect Pearls, and you're good to go. You can add reinkers to it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but with Pearl X, you need a binding agent. Um, has everybody got that? Now, there's lots of fun stuff you can do with these. 
you can um, use the um, use them wet or you can use them dry and so I want to go over a couple of those ways and I need to check on my my chat here because it is not moving there we go um, so let's do some dry techniques first and then we'll work up to wet techniques and the reason I have both black and white is because they look different on black and white and I want to show you both so you can get a kind of um, a feel for them uh, one of my favorite things to have on hand when I'm working with Pearl X is a soft bristle brush so I just have a regular bendy soft brush okay um, always 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 have on hand some Versamark because this is a great agent to bind to um, always with doing the dry processes go ahead and have some clear embossing powder I really like the um, ultra high gloss embossing powder from Viva Las Vegas this is my favorite one and then I'm going to show you some techniques with wet agents obviously the um, gum arabic and then a white glue and I tried this technique just a while ago um, using just some dollar store white glue it worked just fine so it doesn't have to be your super duper Elmer's glue I think you get a little more bubbling going on with the Elmer's glue but dollar store glue will work and also um, a product a lacquer product I prefer Sakura 3D crystal lacquer um, but this is also a fun thing to use so those are the things I'm going to use and I'm also going to use some miracle tape and I have miracle tape in a variety of sizes here okay and um, I think that's I think that's the limit of what I want to use today that'll give us lots of techniques okay so let's start with a simple dry technique and I want to use I want to use my skeleton guy one of my new stamps here and every time I want to um, <laughs> every time I want to rubber stamp my blocks are being used by someone else so um, last night you saw me use the back of one of my my little um, edgers uh, today I'm using the back of another block so just pop him in the ink you get him centered a little better first and I'm gonna stamp him up here because we're gonna deal with him one way up here And this I'm going to use just a um, like this bronze. This is a super bronze. This is really pretty. Okay, look how pretty. Ooh, super bronze. Do you feel super looking at the super bronze? Let me ask you. So, this is just Pearl X. I stamped him on here. Let's see if you can see it. See the Pearl X, and I stamped it with Pearl X here. You can kind of see the mist of the Pearl X, right? And here I'm just going to pounce them on here, and anywhere that the Versa mark is, this is going to attach to it. And this is called poppin'. You can do this also if you have like pastel chalks. You can do the same technique with that. And right now it still has a little mess around the edges. In a minute we'll just wipe it. Okay. So I love these new stamps. I, I got a bunch of um, piratey stamps for Halloween, but I'm totally using this skeleton for, or not for Halloween, but for. A journal project but I'm totally using the skeleton for Halloween too because he is very cool okay. 
and grab my paper towel. And I'm just rubbing across it to get the excess off. So you see how nice and shiny and sparkly. <coughs> Isn't that cool? I love that. Look at him on the black. The bronze and the gold are probably my favorite on the black. Look how cool that looks. Okay. And they're pretty set. They still would um, rub a little bit. If you were doing them on cards, you'd probably be fine. Um, I'm not sure I would use them like in a scrapbook. If you're using a scrapbook, you probably want to set it with something. Okay. But those are very cool. Now, they have, you know, of course, these metallics. The metallics are so fun to work with. But they also have what they call an interference color. And if you're not familiar with interference, interference colors are really, really cool. Um, like this one is called interference blue. It looks, yeah, I love it on black. Um, it looks like this. It looks very boring sitting here in the pot. Um, you can kind of see it has a little bit of a blue haze to it, but it's, it's pretty boring for the most part. The interferences are really cool in this, and the reason they're really cool in this is because whatever you missed it on, it will pick up, okay? So, so here I've stamped on, again, my Pearl X. I'm getting the bronze out of my brush. I'm just wiping it on um, paper towel. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Cheryl better. Um, wiped it on paper towel and now I'm going to go back into this. Hi Cheryl, I did not see you come in. And so here I've added it and you can kind of see see the haze that it gives? It gives just a little bit of a haze. All right. Now let's do it over here on the black. And already you can see how it reacts differently because obviously you can see it better, right? So, come on, focus. There you go. So, see the neat how it's just so totally different from this one. Okay. Now, let's do it one more time with one of the colored pigments. Instead of a metallic or an interference, let's do, let's do the purple. The purple is Misty Lavender. It's very pretty. Nice, pretty, purpley color. Same stamp. Okay, and come in it with purple. Tell us what to do with gesso. Um, not today. Just as a whole, <laughs> just as a whole show by itself. Uh, there's so much fun stuff to do with gesso too. But yeah, I can do a gesso show. Because, I mean, gesso, it reacts with watercolors, it reacts with paint. Lots of cool stuff you can do with gesso. Okay. The second one 
obviously non-interference, so it's got the purple going, and then here's the purple on the black. Okay. So there you go. Those those are a very simple dry technique, just using Versamark watercolors, or not Versamark watercolors, a Versamark watermark pad, and the Pearl X. And imagine you know doing different layers. And the reason I did it this way is because you can see, like here, this one that I stamped first and put the powder on is still the blue, not the purple. The purple is the purple. So, you know, so if you were layering a bunch of different things, you can see how you could accidentally move over the colors and still pick them up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, um, and I love that it's just Versamark that's holding it down. Now, why this works and say stamping it with a, let's stamp it with this instead here. Let's, let's use mode lawn instead. Okay, I'm working on this here. I'm pulling this up so that there we go. Yeah. Okay, so here we have this. All right. Now, when this ink dries, because distress inks, remember, they stay wet just a little bit, okay? And so he's got a little bit of sparkle on him. The problem with this is, is this as it dries, this ink as it dries, it's going to start pulling off, okay? And so the reason that is, is because there's no binding agent. When you're doing it with this method, the Versamark acts as a binding agent, okay? Understand? Yes, it's on the wet ink, but it's going to, as this dries, it's going to start lifting off. So this is not going to be permanent. Now, you could do this with Perfect Pearls, and because the Perfect Pearls has the binding agent in it, it will stick to it. And yes, that is Tim Holtz ink. It's the Tim Holtz ink. It's the Ranger Distress inks. Okay? So if you do it with Perfect Pearls, it will stick to the ink. If you do it with Pearl X, it won't stick to the ink. Got it? But if you do it with Versamark, it will. Okay? Versamark sticks. Regular dye base inks. It'll stick temporarily. Yeah. Perfect Pearls is really cool. Um, it serves a really good purpose. But before I had Perfect Pearls, I had Pearl X. And it was one of my favorite things to play with. Okay, another dry project is taking it and get another skinny card here. We're going to do some tape with it. Would I use Pearl X? It depends on what I'm doing, Liz. Um, I like Pearl X. Pearl X is what I started with. Pearl X is a wonderful, wonderful medium for lots of things. And I am, I'm very familiar with Pearl X. Perfect Pearls, if I know I want it to stick to something. And what I use it for, 100% more than I use the Pearl X for, is for making misters. Um... It's, it's my number one go-to for misters because it, I don't have to worry about putting the gum arabic in there. It's just there, you know? Whereas 
this, I have to think a little bit more. What I like this for is working in my art journal books. I like working with, um, with card making. I like working with altered projects with this. Uh, this can be added to like paper clay and color the paper clay. This can be added to um, any kind of thing. If I'm doing a lot of watercolor stuff and I just don't have the watercolor color that I want, I want just that kind of sparkle, I will mix up a bunch and let it dry. Just like how you can buy it already dried in a pot, I will do that for myself. Um, I, like I said, anything, any of my altered projects, um, I would reach for this versus reaching for the Perfect Pearls. Perfect Pearls for Miss. 95% of the time, Miss. And that occasional time when I'm using Distress Inks and want some sparkle. But, um, but Miss mainly. Because if I want some sparkle, I've already done something with embossing powder or with um, Versamark to facilitate that, you know. Well, thank you. I'm a dabbler, so I've pushed, I like to push all the buttons, kick all the tires, see how it works, you know what I mean? So, what I've done is just put some different strips of Miracle Tape down, and I want to show you, again, kind of the same colors. The first one I want to do, again, is a metallic, so I did it skinny because this is fun, skinny. These are great to do on, see something like this, you could put down some tape or some glue, um, get a nice glue like the, um, oh, the mono adhesive, it dries clear, but it's still a little bit sticky. Get something like that and run it on things and you can stick it to that. Or get the embossing powder that is sticky and you can put the Pearl X on that. I'm going to show you another embossing powder thing in a minute. Now, like I told you last night, and um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Miracle Tape, you can use Miracle Tape. It's excellent for binding books because it is so, so sticky. Um, it is also a very nice product if this was, instead of just plain Pearl X to add some sparkle, if for say you mixed it with your um, embossing powder, and you wanted to heat set your embossing powder on this strip of tape. Unlike the red tape, which would bubble and buckle and turn and move a lot, this will take the heat very, very well. Okay? So. We're crawling up there. So here we have the first. Um, the first line is the Pearl X just added to the tape, okay? Now this one, let's add in the interference ones. I'm going to use a couple of the interference ones because there's several different ones. Some of them are called duos. Let me find a duo. The duos will be one color on one and a different color on the other. Okay, here's a duo. This is a duo red blue. So let's do a duo one down here. If I could only have one and I was 100% interested in making misters, only misters, I would get the perfect pearls. 
because you don't have to think about it. You can just do it. If I had the money to get um, both, I would get both because I would be using these more because of their versatility. So. This is a duo green yellow. So we had duo red blue. This is the duo green yellow. Anybody else have any questions? See, Anthony Duo is fun. They're very unique, in my opinion. I have just a little bit of red or green left in my brush right there. That's why I was picking that up. Sorry. Look at this one. This one's cool. It makes it kind of a red color. <laughs> oh, here. Enjoy. Okay. I just want to answer as many questions as I can because there's so many questions that I know I have, but, um, but some people don't have and I can try to, to think about what your questions might be but I can't always read minds. I know some people think I can, namely my children, but I can't. So that's the blue interference and I think I had a gold interference too. Let me see here. Yes, I don't think it's old. So. And this is why I sparkle a lot because I'm always using stuff that you know has lots of sparkle. So now, like I said before, the Terry Sprawl mixers work much in the same way as these. So if you have the Sakura project, a product, Terry Sprawl Mixers, um, the things that I'm showing you here will work the same, okay? So, hi, Tamily. So these are the duos, the first one being the pink blue, the second one being the yellow gray, or um, yellow green duo, the next one being red duo, or not red duo, but just red. The next one being, um, I think we used a purple there, or a blue. And then the last one being gold. So isn't that cool? So, it's my sparkling personality. <laughs> I sparkle. I have, um, I have some tape, or not tape, I have a stamp that says, yes, I know I have glitter on my face. So, okay. And this is another cool thing. I'm going to do a couple of, of the colors on here. Let's see. Let's use Flamingo Pink. Hi, Joe. Welcome to my crazy craftiness over here. This is Leslie Ray's crafty gig. So I have purple, blue, and pink here. And the reason I'm using a bigger piece of tape is because, you know, you can just do some really cool stuff. I want to put some polka dots down with my brush, kind of make some bigger. Okay. And you can think of this. Nice to meet you, Joe. 
I remember you being on live with Prima, and I remember being in the room with you on live with Prima. Okay, so kind of sparkly little dots there, all right? Now you could paint some stripes. Now, remember, I'm just doing this on adhesive, so translate this into stamping with stays on on a piece of um, acrylic or a piece of acetate and running it through your Xyron or putting a sheet piece of the Miracle Tape because Miracle Tape is in sheets as well. Putting that on the back of your acrylic and painting it in, you know, behind, painting the, the insides, painting the side that's Painting the side with the adhesive. So there. Well, thank you, Tamalee. I appreciate it. Am I saying your name right? Well, thanks, Joe. This show, um, for those of you who don't know, I do Crafty Gig on the second and fourth Fridays of the month. And I do crafty things. Um, you may come and find me doing a sewing project. You may come and find me art journaling. Uh, today, um, it's more a demo about a product, uh, the product being Prolex, so that you can get an idea of what it does. Um, like this last month, July, all of my crafting in July was Christmas related. So for Crafty Gig, I did some ornaments and, and did some different things with that. And um, did some upcycled projects. So, <laughs> so I um, that's why I I decided to do this tonight is because I I've had several people request about using Pearl X and and I like Pearl X. I use um, Terry Sprawl Mixers, Pearl X, and Perfect Pearls, and there's there's a distinct difference between the mixers and the and the Pearl X versus the Perfect Pearls. But so here's and that's just coloring it on. Okay. And that's on black. And this is doing it on white. Okay, so I like them. And that's just using it dry. I haven't done anything extra to it. It's just using it dry. You've never done a mini, a TP roll mini? I will show you again at the end. They're very fun and very easy to do. Um, then my other show is once a month is Leslie Ray's Scrappy Gig, and I do devote that show to scrapbooking. And that's where you'll find me doing mini albums and layouts and um, gift albums and all that kind of stuff. So, okay. Now, let's do some more stamping again. Are you all ready? See, this is why I sparkle. I love these colors too, Cheryl. I want to use now. Is my big acrylic block over here? Yeah, I was going to use my big acrylic block and I thought I had it out. Hmm. I have some of my TP projects on YouTube too, Joe. So you may have seen something I've done already. Let's use Let's see. Work. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to use this. I have scrap helpers at my house. I don't know if y'all have scrap helpers at your house. But I have scrap helpers at my house. And my scrap helpers have helped me uh, take my big acrylic block. Although it may be over there. In my box with my other stamps. Um, so sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. Right? You haven't seen ideas like mine? Well, thank you, I think. <laughs> Where did LT go? I don't know. Where did LT go? What is a scrap helper? I have a, um, a six-year-old and a 12-year-old. And they... They love to craft. In fact, my son, um, he'll be doing, he has a stream that he does about once a month. And he'll be doing his stream um, tomorrow evening. It's kind of a, uh, a last minute thing because of school and projects and all that stuff. As to, you know, if he, if he has time to do stuff. And so when he does, we, we do that. Okay, I'll just hit these with a burst mark. Now I'm going to use Viva Las Vegas Ultra High Gloss Emboss Powder. And I'm going to stick this on here. And I like this emboss powder. It's extra. <laughs> yeah, bricks would do the job for sure. That is actually a tile um, that I had used enamel on. And, um, or not enamel, I had used resin on. And so it's got a, we have lovely, lovely, lovely. I like this stamp. This is my new stamp. It's a map stamp. I bought it for my art journal, but I haven't played with it yet. So, move my white piece of paper out of the way. Let's heat emboss these. I am. I, I did live in Louisiana for a little while, but I am from Texas. I was born in Mississippi, and um, we didn't. I don't think we lived there for a whole long time. And then my dad got a job, and my mom got a job in Louisiana, and we lived there for um, for a while. And then by the time I was four and a half, five, we moved to Texas and have lived here ever since. So people who try to put my accent, because um, it's certainly not Texan, um, it's Southern. So, but I'm making sure my embossing powder got nice and embossed. Yeah, she's, she's from the South. <laughs> so. See, the rest of the folks that um, I do the odd show with, one of them is from Georgia, but she's on vacation right now. One of them is from um, Canada and her husband is a filmmaker and he's having a shoot tomorrow so I'm sure she's probably tending to last minute details for that and then the other one is Fab from London and um, I'm pretty sure Fab's asleep oh Hello. <laughs> Dawn is here. Hi, Dawn. Morning glasses, Dawn. Okay. I've stamped my stamp. This is my new lovely, lovely map stamp. And I've stamped it on both black and on white. And so now what I want to do is play with my Pearl X. 
And I'm going to get my blue Prolex. That's the turquoise. And I'm not going to fill in all the places, just some of the places with the turquoise. I think I want to fill in these lines here with turquoise. And the, the gloss and quasi tackiness of heat emboss will attract the powder. So watch this. So see, it's picking up the powder. So. I thought you would be getting ready for, for the shoot tomorrow. But I'm glad you're here. Thanks, Dawn. I want to get this line here kind of blue. Now these are fun, 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 fun. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to spray it. I'm going to zap it with the heat tool one more time. These are fun to do with snowflakes because you could get some silver and some blue. Um, in my house, snowflakes also mean um, purple and pink. Okay. And you can you can make real pretty soft snowflakes. Yeah, you sometimes you can use like hairspray um, if you're not worried about the um, the yellowing of it. Um, you can use um, all kinds of acrylic sealers and fixatives and stuff to, to do that. I want to use this gold. The reason I chose this gold is it's a dark antique gold. And these last a long time because I'm using a very little amount. The trick to this technique is just a soft bristle brush. Okay. And if you're impatient like I am, like I just was just now and wanted to move it along faster, some of that's going to stay. Yes, I remember Aquanet hairspray. I love the gold and black. If you're a big, big um, Chinese um, and Oriental card making fan, the gold on the black is just gorgeous. 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 This makes it interesting um, if you're doing like something where you have a pretty basic cardstock and you want a little more interest to it. You can take that and um, It's not sticking as well as it could. I'll go back over this a little bit. Let's try that again. It's not sticking like I wanted it to. On this one. Instead of rubbing first, I'm going to zap it again first and then rub. Um, what was I saying before I decided I wanted to come back over this? Oh, you have boring cardstock. And you're wanting to do some die cuts or something, okay? Go over it with either the Versamark and and that, or do the heat gun. This technique with the heat gun and make a a light color, like a dark purple. Put a little bit of um, gold in it, or 
That would be very, very pretty. And all I'm doing is kind of remelting. There we go. Remelting the embossed enamel just a smidge so that it grabs that Pearl X. Usually what happens is I'm not doing two pieces at once like this. And so when I rub it, it already, you know, attacks it. But before you rub it, make sure it's dried. I'm making, giving it a little, a little wipey. And then dry it like that. And the blue, you'll notice the blue is really bad about going ahead and staining the paper. Some of them don't stain it so badly. The blue definitely does. But now this is stuck into the emboss enamel because it's, you know, attached to itself. Yes, I usually go for two hours. So <laughs> that's why uh, I, I was trying my best yesterday to, to stick it to an hour. Stay slow. That's why I practiced for everybody before I came yesterday. And see, look at this one. Just the hint of gold in there. Isn't that great? Cheryl, that's from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. I'll be using that in an upcoming thing. I like them too, Liz. I like both. I the doing the prima class was really amazing, amazing. But um, but I like this group, and I I will do this even if it's just me talking to myself. I will do this all day. So, hi, Leanne. I'm glad you made it. So, this is using the embossing powder. Same colors, same stamp. And it's just a neat little stick them, okay? So, let's see. We've embossed it. We've stamped it with Versamark. We've taped it. Let's get wet. Okay. So, let's make a mist. I don't want this much mist. Let me get a smaller mister. Okay, here's a mister. A mister mister. And let me see if I have one that's just water. This will work better in this. Okay, this one's pink, but it'll work better in this because this one's just water. All right. Let's do, let me make sure it's just water. Yes, it's just water. This one is one of my mini misters. Um, I don't have it clean, so I don't want to use this one. This one is just one I have for water. It is clean. It even has water in it. I'm going to put some more water in there. Yes, everybody, introduce yourselves. Let's see, I told about Crafty Gig and Scrappy Gig. Crafty Gig and Scrappy Gig are my my shows. And then my, my consortium of crafters, of which Dawn is one of. That is very fun and special. That is... Um, there's four of us, Dawn, Amanda, Fab, and myself. And the odd show started off as um, a random stream on an odd Friday. That year we had five fifth Fridays. And so I, um, Fab at the time was doing first and third Friday. I was doing second and fourth Friday. And I said, I said, hey, how about on when we have, you know, a fifth Friday, we just have an odd show. And it kind of stuck. And so we have been on fifth Fridays streaming ever since. Well, at the beginning of last year, uh, the four of us decided, go big or go home. 
And so we added in um, daily shows, which they have a daily show at noon. Um, and during the summer, we had during June and well, during <laughs> June and July, we did um, what did we do? We did first or uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's what we did. And then August, we're taking a break. I'm going to add in to this is Micro Pearl. Micro Pearl is just a good shimmer, okay? I added in what, this is no way, three tablespoons or teaspoons. So I put some water in and I added in what I figured would be enough drops to be equivalent to the size. I've done this so many times, okay? Um, and then I'm going to add in a couple of dollops. That's the technical term. Dollop. What is the yellow stuff? The yellow stuff that I put in was the gum arabic. Was my binding agent. Because remember, Pearl X does not have a binding agent. So you need to add one. Gum arabic is my preferred binding agent. Okay, now this just is going to be a pearl mist, okay? I'm going to stick it in here. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Hi, Barbara. It makes it stick to the paper, Liz. Okay. So. Yes, you could use Mod Podge. You can do half and half Mod Podge in water. And I had, I had told them that also. But you can do half and half Mod Podge in water. And that will also work as a binding agent. Okay. You can see. Even though that's wet. Let me zap it. Let me put it down to zap it. Because heating your hand is not a good thing. Okay, so see the sparkle on here? Good to know, not to heat it in your hand. <laughs> so if you don't have gum arabic and you want to make a mister with your, um, either with your Terry Sprawl mixers, because you can do this with the mixers too, or with your um, Pearl X, you can use half and half Mod Podge. You'd heat it in your hand? Okay, this is just plain sparkle. I can add more and it'll be sparklier. I can add a background color with a reinker and it will um, it will be like a colored mist. So you can have any colors. And what I do, especially if I like one a whole lot, like this one I've done so many times I've got it memorized. I know that in this size I'm going to have this much mist and I'm going to have this much whatever. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's enough of the, let's see, it'll let you see it. Uh, it's got kind of an opalescence. I don't know if you can see it underneath the pink or not. Um, but there's a little bit of an opalescence to it. And this will, um, I will probably use this because I couldn't find my other white one that I've always done the micro pearl in. Uh, but this is one of my favorite mists just to spritz on something just to have a little, a little spritzy. Now, compare this to, let's say, one that I purchased. I purchased Iridescent Pearl. The big thing you notice is that I don't have a shaker ball in mine. Thanks, Leanne. My friend Julietta painted my nails for me. And um, she painted them Prima-E so they would match my project last night. And... Um, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, putting this down. So, Dawn, notice placing, placing the paper on the table. Now, this one has a little bit different sparkle to it because it has a little bit different mica. It's not the micro pearl. 
So it has kind of an iridescent -y, um, sparkle going on, but it's very similar. A little bit different. And probably if I added um, one of the, the duo colors into it, I could get something very similar with this. Okay. So, you know, once it's sprayed on a piece of paper, not much different. Yeah, I think it does the trick. And you can play with the different ones to see which, which you like. I like this because it's subtle and I can spray it on something and it doesn't just really grab to it. Um, okay, so made our little mist. All right. The next thing I want to do is mix a paint with it. Now, you could, let's mix it two ways. Let's mix a watercolor, let's mix a lacquer one, okay? Move my pink thingy. Bye, Liz. I'm recording. Hopefully we won't break this recording like we did the other one. I'll post links if I if I'm allowed to post it in the YouTube. And for this one, I'm adding in um, some gum arabic so that I get a good binding to my paper. Okay. And I want to use these two again. Let's see, what color do we want to do, guys? What color have we not played with? We play with bronze, we play with blue, we play with pink. Let's do spring green. How about this? Isn't that pretty? Mmm, spring green. Okay. So I'm gonna put some green in here and mix it up. Look how shiny and sparkly. I know. Feels very top of the morning. We've um, we've been talking a lot about um, Ireland because we have a group going to Ireland um, through the travel agency, and so we've been very Ireland speaking lately. Well, let's do this one. Now, here's another thing I didn't do, but we could um, with the watercolor brushes. Stick it some water and some gum arabic in here plain and then you can dip into the powders and paint with it also okay i might use this just as a brush because it's sitting right there but um you could make a nice wash with it i have it very thin i don't have a lot of pigment in it we can add more pigment here in a minute so you can see that too Okay, show you, show you the green on the black. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay. I think it's just absorbing into the black a lot better. Let's add more pigment to it because I want it, I like my colors thicker. And especially if you're going to do it where it, um, it gets the, to the stage where it will dehydrate and and dry up because you can mix these on your little palettes and then you know make your own watercolor palette make sure you use enough gum arabic when you do that okay this is gonna be darker over here because it's more concentrated with the pigment okay. Yeah, it just doesn't want to uh, adhere to this white very well. Sorry, guys. Not all whites are created equal, apparently.
but with more pigment, more of a wash, more pigment, more of a wash. Um, no, what I did is this is the gum Arabic. It's already, it's liquid. Okay. And what I did is I added water and gum Arabic in here. And then I added my powder in. Okay. My gum Arabic came liquidly. You can buy gum Arabic in a powder. And if you do that, um, I'm not really sure what the ratios are because I usually buy mine in the liquid already. Um, but you could, you could figure that out and there's probably somewhere on the web that already has that written. Okay. So this is using the green with water and gum Arabic. Now I want to show you with the lacquer. And I'm mixing these in my Dollar Tree shop classes in case you were needing to know, yeah, the specific products. <laughs> you can buy like all these little plasticky shot glasses. I think they come probably at least 20 to a package. They make great mixing vials. So. And this is another um, use of the crystal lacquer is in a pinch. If you don't have gum Arabic, you don't have Mod Podge, you could use some crystal lacquer. The thing with crystal lacquer is that you need to remember is that it has its own um, sheen to it. So you're going to be adding, you know, the shininess of crystal lacquer to it. And same with Mod Podge. Um, if you're using Mod Podge and you don't want the shininess, then you need to find another product because um, the Mod Podge is going to add shininess to it. I mean, it already sparkles, but it'll have kind of a lacquer um, to it. So I'm mixing in. My Pearl X. With my Laka. And see this is very thick. And creamy. Well, I'll use one of my other brushes. So I'm going to keep this one nice and dry. Actually, I'm going to use this one. Sorry. I want to keep that one nice and neat. Use these. Okay. Um, on the black with my lacquer. And when it dries, you'll notice it has a definite different texture and finish to the water. And brushing the lacquer on, it will, it will, um, it will dry faster than if you were just kind of puddling it on.
Okay. So there it is with the lacquer. Let's see. The lacquer versus the water. The lacquer being this one. The water and the gum aramic, this one. Now, this, the difference is, uh, when this is over, I'm going to um, put this in on a page in my, my art journal-y thing because it's not going to, when it, when it dries, it's done. It's not going to allow you to re-oof it. When this dries, it will allow you to add more water back to it and be okay. All right. Now, a fun thing to do with the water and the gum arabic is get it in your brush, like your toothbrush, and flick it. Sorry. Flick it on things. Okay. which is kind of like misting it. So if you can't afford misters and you have a little bit and you want to make a flicky thing, it gives you a different kind of mist. Flicksters. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, my uh, thanks Jen for giving the definition of gum Arabic. My chat went away. Hi mommy. Oligosaccharides, that's kind of fun. So playing with the Perlex. This is with the crystal lacquer. So see how much shinier that is. It has a nice shiny finish. This with the water and the gum arabic. And this just flipped on. Okay. So we did those. Now I want to do one more. So let me move some of my stuff here. Actually, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to do it with the crystal lacquer and I'm going to do it with, let's do it with the crystal lacquer first since we already have that mixed up. So I'm going to take this that we have mixed up and, and you have to use, this, this process uses crystal lacquer. I notice I'm getting a big, thick, lumpy of it right here. And I came across this technique kind of on accident. I was trying to get a super saturated um, look, super shine, onto a project. And was being impatient about it drying. I'm trying to flick some gold into this and it's not flicking very good for me. I need a better flicker. Let's try this flicker. And I was being impatient about it drying because, you know, I need it to do now. Yes, mommy sells misters in the store. Right now. And it wasn't doing it right now. And so I got my heat tool out because, you know, the heat tool works wonders for everything, right? And started drying my lacquer. Now, 
which you see what's happening okay and I am purposefully now you can you can play with your bubble and keep it all bubbled up or you can let it do this and make a really interesting textured background and I like sticking other colors of the Pearl X in there because I think it looks interesting. I know. Isn't that cool looking? I look at it with the green up close. Wouldn't that be fun on a Halloween card? Or cut it out and make it into some really cool die cut letters? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, this is with the crystal lacquer. Flowers, absolutely. Moonscape. Yes, well, I put a little bit of the bronze in there, or the gold. Is it the gold? I think it's the gold is what I put in there. Let me see if I can grab up underneath it. And so the gold, you start seeing some of the gold in there, like especially right here. There's gold in there. So isn't that fun? Well, this is with the crystal lacquer, but sometimes, just sometimes, you take your white glue and probably the first time I did this, we used um, like Elmer's glue. Like I said, this is just plain old dollar store glue. I had some friends who were using it and I wanted to see what it would do just for you know glue purposes. And I have it coated on there. I use my finger because that's my favorite tool. And we'll flick some. On this side we'll do some flicked and on the other side we'll do some kind of smooched on there. The smooch is the technical term, remember. I'm going to go ahead and put this on both sides, but I'm going to come back and smooch it in over here. I'll flick a little, come back and smooch. Crystal Lacquer is Sakura Hobby Crafts. Mommy carries that in her store. And her store is cutandpastememories.com. I'll give you a slide here in just a little bit with that on there. But if, if Mommy or Dawn or somebody wants to put that in there. Because um, with cut and paste memories you get a coupon with the crafty gig code thank you Don if mommy is around she can tell you about the crafty gig code better because I always forget if it's 10 or 15 percent off and And I'm going to put a little bit of this turquoise in because this will be fun. Now, the one over here, this one, I'm going to leave kind of like this with it just kind of dashed on. And that's a good way to stop right there is <laughs> with your big flop of paint. I'm going to come back through this one here real quick and, um, and kind of do this to it. So you can get two different ideas going. This one's going to be a little heavier on the blue. Sorry. <laughs> Let's get a little green back in there. Because sometimes blue happens, people. Right? They're all craft opportunities. No craft catastrophes.
Okay. So let me show you before we start doing stuff to it. This one over here is just kind of powder flicked on. This one over here smooched on, right? So some of that's blown off. That's okay. And you just kind of keep heating it. Right now it looks like it's not going to do anything, but trust me, it will. A salt shaker would work also, yes. But I kind of like the clumps, Joe. But a salt shaker would definitely work. And you see it start to bubble. I don't know if you can see it start to bubble yet. Let me, let me give y'all a little closer view. There we go. You can see it definitely bubbling over here. It's like a swami. It's a swami, mommy. Mommy, are you back? Can you tell them a little bit about uh, the Crafty Gig code? So we've got a lot of newbies in here, and um, they were liking the Sakura and the Misters, and um, I bet if we got some interest, we might could. Um, I could order some Prolex if the company still carries that. Thank you. What I'm looking for here, guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing, just I'm looking for it to, um, how the colors are, if, if they, if they are sticking where I want them to, um, because when I sit here and put the heat tool, it kind of moves the colors around a little bit under there, and I'm going to heat it till I kind of like it. I'm coming over here and revisiting my blue blob, because it needs visiting. If you, if you were standing here closer, you might hear it um, snap and popple. Yes, definitely. Definitely. A, a punch would go through it um, because it's not real thick. Let's see if I can see. It's not real thick. So I, I really like this one. This is the side that we plop, plop, plopped on. Okay. I really like this one. This one, this is where the blue got a little crazy, but I like it too, but it's more subdued, whereas this one is more um, all terrain -y. Let me grab a real quick punch and I'll show you that it goes through. Let's, let's grab this circle punch. I just happen to have circle punches sitting right by, right? Yeah, I like the sprinkled best too. So, punches. So, let's see. 
should go through the lacquer too. Yep, definitely. Aren't these cool? What can we do with these guys? These look like a lot of fun. I want to punch some more of these. That one. Oh, look at this one. This one almost looks like the world. These almost look like the world with the blue and the gold. Like parts of the world. Look. Isn't that cool looking? And jewelry. <gasps> Ooh. Yes, mom has perfect pearls in the store, but she can get Pearl X. So if y'all want to want her to check the prices on Pearl X, um, you can email her. Pirate coins, definitely, mommy. Definitely pirate coins. Okay, this is too much fun. You guys inspire me. Who said punches? We definitely, yeah, definite punches are definitely a good thing. So. So isn't that fun? Y'all like that? I love these. Yes, nice on decorating on a card. Could be some cute little accent circles. This is definitely an easy technique to do. So... And I really love how it turned out. I love how textury it is because it's still got a little texture to it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it still has a little texture to it. So. Yes, Mommy has. And your, your hands get shiny too. Yes, one of my comments yesterday, Mommy, was that I had glitter on my arms. I was like, oh, if you only knew. <laughs> so. So, yay! I'm loving these. Loving these. The colors we use there, guys. We use the turquoise and the spring green and the antique gold. So, yeah, right? Only on my arm. So, this is very cool. Yay. So, does anybody have any Prolex questions that I didn't answer already? Come on, come up, so you can see me. <gasps> it's me. Hi, me. Let's just go this way. There we go. Any questions? My chat freeze again. Let's see. Ta -da. Bellies, everybody going over to mommy's store. <laughs> Y'all have left me because you have to go shop now. Hang on a minute, guys. If you're talking to me, I can't see you. Having a chat attack. Okay, here it comes. It says it's loading. But I like the Pearl X. I hope y'all like the Pearl X too. And I like all the different things you can do with it. It's very versatile. So... Um, the things I showed you, the thing I didn't show you is just adding it straight into some embossing powder to make colored embossing powders. And, um, that you kind of have to kind of play with it to see how much color you need to how much embossing powder, um, and just mix it until you kind of like it. And I usually test it, you know, on something before I put it on my actual project, um, on the Viva Las Vegas blog, I did take and, um, and do that one time. So if you are, if someone in the room would type up the blog link. And usually I try to, on my posts, put my name. So if you search for my name or search for Crystal Lacquer 
and uh, not crystal lacquer search for mixers and the boss enamel and that will get you there hang on i've got to get chat somewhere else um my chat is not popping back up for me so just one second oh there it goes maybe there we go here we are um you enjoy watching me play well, I wanted to play and kind of get an idea going for you. I've had so many people ask me about Prolex that I want to take the time to do that because it's it's just a nice um, it's a nice product. It has so many so many applications, and you can I didn't let's see I have some here it is here I didn't do this we can do this um, paper clay if you want to. Um, add it to some paper clay. It will color the clay. We didn't do that. And I had, I have a brand new, I have a brand new package of paper clay right here. The delight. Let me open that real quick and I'll show you. Yeah, and so many great colors. Um, I think I looked today and they have at least 16 colors plus interferences plus, um, you know, just different things. Let's say we want. What color do we want? I don't want blue hands. Let's do let's do silver. No, let's do let's do pink. Let's have pink hands. You love the copper the best. <laughs> okay, let me find copper. Let's do copper. Here, I'm gonna pull it back down so you can see this. Okay, here's paper clay and the pretty copper. Isn't that pretty? I'm just going to pop some in here. I'm going to pop a little bit so we can see. I'm going to pop about that much in here. Okay. And I'm going to mix it in. It blends well um, also in polymer clay. So if you're a polymer clay artist and you need a specific color, you must have some pull with the No, she said copper. I said, okay, good. I like Jen's flowers, so I like to make her happy. Maybe one day she'll just send me some flowers. I'm teasing Jen. <laughs> this is getting a very, very light color. It's just got a light color. Okay. So I'm going to add a little more. I'm going to add quite a little, little lop of it. There we go. So if you only have, you know, like certain colors of, of uh, polymer clay, oh, don't you know, this would be cool with the, uh, with the sparkle of it in there. Oh yeah, that would be so cool. It's starting to come around. My hands are going to be red in a minute because of it. Watch. As I get this mixed through, and you can see it smearing in there. And just mix it. Um, another thing is you could sprinkle it into your molds, like if you're into molding um, paper clay and stuff. This is the Delight Paper Clay. It's a little bit uh, softer consistency, and I like it better. Yes. You need to post some jewelry you have too, Jen. That would be beautiful. There's just so many applications to this. And it's so much more versatile, I think, than um, using the um, the Perfect Pearls. I mean, Perfect Pearls has some similar applications. And like I said, if you wanted just to do misting, I would do that. Um, like spray the uh, yeah. I mean, this especially like this one with the that has the the stuff already mixed in it, um, Joe. This would definitely, here I'll go grab a piece because I have a piece over there on the table. We'll play with that too. Because it has the binding agent already in it. See, this is just a light color as opposed to the white that it was. Okay. So the more you put in there, obviously the more it'll do. Love this. Okay. Put that down for a minute. Let me grab a piece of um, resist canvas. Just a second.
Okay, I brought back a couple of things. What is Resist Canvas? Well, I'm glad you asked, Dawn. Resist Canvas. This is Resist Canvas from Prima. And what they've done is put a um, design on the canvas. And I'm going to do a key. Um, they put a design on the canvas so that when you put mists or watercolors or inks and things on it, and then you come back over it, the resist will um, will pop up. So hang on, let's let's do this. Everybody needs a green key in their life, right? And this is with the water and the gum arabic and the green. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to rub. I'll pop out this middle here. So you see the design coming through. And if we spritz it, because, you know, why not? And kind of tap it, more of the design will come through. There you go. That looks pretty cool. What do you think? Love it. Have to find a place to put it. Okay. And then I grabbed also, oops, grab this. Okay. This is just a regular Prima flower. This is the gray. I'm using the green because this is what we have mixed. Okay. But, um, and I'm kind of stirring up to get all the stuff down there. But of course, Okay, love this too. Even if it's green, gives it kind of a patina look. It'd be cool to come back on top of that with a little bit of copper. Oh my. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Ooh, this. Okay. Are you with me? Take this with black flowers and bronze or copper. Very spooky Halloween -y. look. Ah, isn't that cool? Very, very steampunky. Love that. Okay. And these, let's grab one of these bad boys here. Of course, these that we, you know, played with yesterday. Because Anything that's going to have mulberry is going to just suck this right up. It's going to be perfect. I'm going to mist a little. Kind of extend it out some more. And of course when it dries it will it'll be even drier, but you kind of get the idea, right? So, yeah, cool stuff, guys. Great ideas. You inspire me, too. Let's flick it. There it is flicked. So, love playing with it on the Prima stuff. Okay, I have to leave now because I have to go play with my Prolex. No, I'm kidding. I must be getting tired. No, actually, my brain is like, ooh, and this, and ooh, and that, and this is my life. <laughs> I just, I start playing with something, I go, ooh, let's play with that. Let's flick it on this and see what it looks like flicked on this, you know, and. See, I added a little flicky on there. You can see the little bit of flicky. So, anyway, but yeah. I, I, I like flicking things. We'll have flicks everywhere. Love this. I think, honestly, 
I think I need to go melt some more things because these are my favorite thing I did tonight. Right now. These are my fave. So, next week. <laughs> let's talk about next week. Let's talk about stuff. Okay, here we go. I have slides. All right. Um, I told you about cutandpastememories.com. There is my mom's website. And if you don't see something you like, you can always, always, always email her and ask her. And she does her best to get what she can. Um, so always, always do that. Um, next week is Leslie Gray's Scrappy Gig. It is every third Friday, and so we have third Friday coming up, and we will have a beautiful scrappy gig. It's 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Same Crafty Gig channel, just a different show. Um, and remember, Crafty Gig is on second and fourth Friday of the month, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. And those are the ways you can follow me. Um, also, remember, I have a Kim tag, and that shows all the ways you can connect. It includes my YouTube, which many of the videos that were here have been moved over to the YouTube just to allow for more space. The Odd Show. The Odd Show is um, on summer break for the dailies. The weekly reboots will continue throughout the summer. Um, there are random days. Usually, we know uh, a couple of days before at least the day of. Um, next week, probably do reboot on Wednesday, bring it back to Wednesday. Um, and that is 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. And um, that is in the link to room. And there is a link to link there. Um, if you're a fan of the Odd Show Live of Dawn, you want to put the, the Odd Show Live's fan page in there for me or our Kim tag. Um, that will allow you to get updates on the Odd Show. Um, and the Odd Show on October 6th will be doing its second annual World Card Making Live program. That's going to be all day. And um, we have lots of demoers coming in to do card making. And there will be door prizes to be won. Lots of cool stuff going on. So that's me. That's where I am. And... Um, sometime tomorrow afternoon <coughs> my son probably about four o'clock um, since Dawn is not crafting tomorrow she is going to be filming um, he will jump on to Will's Arteria if you follow me on my fan page I will make sure to post a note there uh, with the exact um, time because right now it's still kind of up in the air we have to see where we are what we're doing I was going to tell him what I was going to be doing Okay, well, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to design a couple of scratch build trailers. And then we're going to design a semi truck and a pickup truck. So, Design from scratch? Uh, or draw? We're going to draw. Draw, okay. Will is my son. He's 12. He does lots of drawing <laughs> and painting and crafting as well. And um, occasionally he'll play his saxophone for you. So That's he will be on things. for about an hour, hour and a half is usually about how long his show is. And like I said, his show is very random. So um, if you're around, come on. Um, if not, he does record it so you can see it later. Thanks, Jen. And I will definitely put it on my fan page. So um, if nobody has any further questions of me, I'm going to stop the recording. And then I'll come back and um, so that... Joe, I think, wanted to see the toilet paper tube roll. I will show that. So um, I will be right back, guys.